All right, so today we're gonna to talk about two amazing gaming phones that I have been testing for quite a while here. That is the Red Magic 6 Pro and the Red Magic 6 are. These are pretty much dedicated gaming phones. They are built around gaming. The 6 Pro definitely screams more gamer aesthetic, right? With the red, silver, and black and stuff, which I love. And when you come over to the 6R, it's more like a standard phone. You'd be hard pressed to even guess this was a gaming phone. Now, as many of you know, I don't review many phones. I think I've done one or two in the past, but I really want to dabble into it more. But again, more surrounded around gaming. So I'm not going to sit here and bore you with back of the box, you know, website specs. I'll slap them up on a screen, screen right here and you can see them. And then we're going to talk about, again, that core user experience. So if you're interested, here are the specs of the 6 Pro and the specs of the newly released 6R. And I'm also gonna chime in with a few comparisons talking about my daily devices. The iPhone 12 Pro Max right here, dabbling with some of the games on all of them, like Call of Duty across all platforms, seeing if I'm noticing a difference from say, an iPhone to a gaming phone. What's really separating them? Is it worth going with a gaming phone compared to an iPhone? Now I recently did a poll on the channel asking people, hey, how often do you game? Is it like once a day, once a week, once a month? You know, never. And again, the poll came out. A lot of people don't mobile game, but I think when we step back and think about it, a lot of times we are dabbling with the game, whether it be Call of Duty or a Word game or something on there on our phones. Do we consider ourselves mobile gamers? Probably not. But again, I think we're all dabbling with some mobile games on our phone. But again, that's what we're going to kind of talk about here. What separates a gaming phone from, say, a regular phone like an iPhone. So again, we looked at the aesthetics already. We already talked about that, but there's a lot difference in it. Number one, you can see the camera cluster over here compared to this one. You got that traditional stick out, this guy's straight down the middle, but the buttons are quite different as well. If you look on the side of the 6R and then the 6 Pro, you have your volume rocker over here, also with the grate up there with a the speaker and then your fan's gonna come out. Nothing over here on the 6R. Back of the 6 Pro is metal, on the regular uh, six over here, it's actually glass, but this guy's metal. On here, it's plastic. So again, you definitely have more weight over here than this one. Speaking of that, let's go on and get the scale and you can see, cause it's clearly noticeable in the hand as well. So let's go and get our six pro here, slap it on a scale. We're getting 238. And again, you really feel that weight, that heft in the six pro. All right, so six R. 194 so again a dramatic difference in weight and yes you clearly clearly feel it in the hand like night and day it's that much of a difference so again aesthetics and weight are clearly the biggest difference but then again diving deeper the buttons and then on the other side over here as you see you have shoulder buttons on both of them little haptic uh, little touches right there then you have your power button here and then your volume wheel is on the right side on the 6R. So again, volume wheel left side, volume wheel right side. Then you have this switch up here to hop into game mode. So we're seeing some differences straight out the gate. Like this one's definitely screaming gamer. You're probably seeing, again, with the speaker and the fan grate, you're seeing a lot of that there. This is, like I stated, kind of like a traditional cell phone. Now, when we dive into the phones here and look at them, all right, so we got this guy loaded up. Load this guy up with a thumb press right there, both the same. Let's make sure, I'm gonna crank our brightness up on both of them just so we see them better. Now, as you see, I'm swiping through. This phone is set to, if you can see here, it's set to 165, this one's 120. Now I can get in here, slide over, and I'll crank it up to the max on the 6R is 144. 144 hertz screen, come on, get out of here. 144 hertz screen on the 6R, 165 on the 6 Pro. And again, simple to just change it right here. Just slide over, bam, and then you have all your, come on, we're on video, all your options, 60, 90, 120, and 165. Same on the 6R, as you see whenever you press this, 60, 90, 120, and 144. So is that something to write home about? Is that something to sell you on a phone like this, right? Having a higher refresh rate, refresh rate screen. Like you see on gaming models, like, all day long, you wanna go for the higher, right? But is that noticeable in a phone? Like, are you gonna really notice that, say, within a game or something like that? 
it's hit or miss. It really is hit or miss. It's depending on what you're compared to. Now I want to take all that and see if it's really beneficial. Again, if we're going to notice it, talking about the 144, the 165, are we going to notice a difference between those two? And then are we going to notice a difference again, if we were gaming on something basic like an iPhone right here, right? So the cool thing, well, we're not going to play word form. That's not the one I want to get to. What I want to show you here, let's close this out. Word form, such a fun game, by the way. Anyways, again, on the six pro, you got this little red switch right here. Fire it up and you go right in to the gaming thing. Now, listen to this. That's the fans running. They're buzzing out of there, out of there. You can even feel like when I cover it up, they are seriously loud fans and it's a little annoying. Like if you're playing at night, Whoever's next to you, if anybody, whatever, you know, you're going to hear it. It really is loud. On the 6R, you're going to swipe down here. And then where is it here? Right here, you have game space. Click that. Goes into the same thing. Now, of course, you don't have that chugging fan. This guy is going to town over here, right? All right, so now we're getting a game of Asphalt 9 on the 6R. As you can see, butter smooth, extremely crisp right here. Now... What you are catching, listen to the volume. All right, what are we on parking a wreck right here? The volume is cranked up pretty well, as you can see over there. You see that? Our triggers are up top, so usually you'd be holding a phone like this. Our volume is completely gone because our hand is covering up the screen. So you'd have to be like this or something because the speaker is right there. That's a no-go. That is a big time no-go. Like it just, and again, if you're using the triggers, you're going to be up here. So your hand's automatically going to cover that. Complete design flaw there. Now we're going to fire up the 6 Pro and play a race right here. As you can see, also very snappy. I, I don't know, I feel like this one's a little more vivid. Maybe that one's a little more natural on the 6R, but the 6 Pros definitely feels a little bit more vivid to me. But as you can see, I'm holding the phone, just as I was as before, clearly picking up the volume because we have it on the bottom, you have it on the top, then you have it right there as well. So, I mean, you're gonna get that volume, you get that immersive sound. It, Clear as day sounds better, especially if you're playing a game. It really is like I'm just you just enjoy the experience so much more. Like with that 6R, you felt like you had to hold it a certain way. The screen's at 165. Do I notice the difference of the 165 to 144? Not really. I really don't. It's really like the biggest thing is the sound because both of them look. Clear as day, butter smooth. Now let's go on a fire up a race on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Brightness is set to max right here. And we're holding it just like, no bumpers of course, but we're holding it just like we did the other ones. Let me tell you what, clear as day, like especially on the road. I got it, I got it. Clear as day on the road and the environment around you you clear as day see the blurriness, right? So you notice a big difference from the iPhone 12 Pro Max compared to either of those over there. Either of those, like this is, again, it's not nearly as enjoyable. I mean, yeah, it's doable for sure. But again, the 12 Pro Max is not a gaming phone. It's not. It's passable, it's doable, but it's not what you're going for those clearly take the win and this is like i don't know again it's not very enjoyable on the 12 pro max all right so clear as day with that first game test there the red magics take the win all day long right now one thing i want to show you talking while we're in the game controls because you're still hearing those fans chug which are stinking annoying on the game control you can slide over and control all your game settings right there Aim assist, pull down some socials right there, adjust your screen, your brightness, everything by a flick of the button, whether that be on the 6 Pro or we'll get back in here and you can do the exact same thing on the 6R, okay? Now, the fans. 
turbo fan, you can turn it off and it's gonna be silent right there. Do we need those fans running? I'm not sure. I tried it in both ways with fans on, fans off, battery was about the exact same. But again, I guess you have the option if you're playing this for an extensive amount of time to fire up the batteries rather than on the 6R, you do not. All right, so I wanna show you on a game of Call of Duty on the 6R first, and the thing that really makes these, game, these phones shine are again the shoulder buttons. Right? So you still move with your sticks, but you can set your controller buttons or your top buttons to whatever you want. It makes it so much more enjoyable because you're playing just like a controller. Okay, he got me. So anyways, as you saw, they're not really, they're just like little touch sensitive buttons right up top there. And you can adjust them by sliding out here, shoulder buttons, you have vibration feedback on or off, and then touch button on or off. And then again, you locate them whatever you want as far as which button you want. So I got aim down sight and then regular shoot right there. And again, it's just like no joke. It just changed the experience of a mobile game night and day. It really is. It is so much better as I'm spinning myself around here. Now the touch screens you still got to use to control yourself and that's kind of, meh, I wish there was something better for that. Come on, can I find someone here? Someone's finding me, where are you? Just like that, it's just easy just to bam, hit that top trigger and you're good to go. Now just for the sake of comparison, we're also gonna get a round of Team Deathmatch on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Okay, we're loading in here. So again, we've got our basic touch controls. Now we don't have the bumpers here. And this is the biggest thing I want you to notice. Like, so I'm controlling my character. And then I got to lift up, fire with this button over here. Ah, see, I that that's the thing. Cause you're lifting your thumb up and you're trying to get to the fire button. And it's just, it's not how gaming is meant to be, right? It works, sure. But as far as gaming, ah, it drives me stinking nuts. See, and then I can't, yeah, see, now I'm lost. Now I'm lost, now I'm lost. Okay, I, I just can't do it anymore. So that's a big deal right there. Those shoulder buttons, as weird and cheesy and basic as it sounds, just being able to hold your phone like a controller and have those up there for whatever game you're playing, no joke, guys, it's night and day. It's that much of a difference. It's that much more enjoyable, you know, talking about not having shoulder buttons over here and then over here. It's it's huge, it really is. Now, one other design flaw as far as sound with both phones, whether we're talking about the 6R or the 6 Pro, again, along with sound, is number one, the 6R does not have a headphone port. What you get is this USB-C adapter, plugs in to the bottom, Bam, plug in your headphones. Now, on the 6 Pro or the 6, your headphone port is up there. Okay, so stick with me. So you're seeing headphone ports over here, so your 3.5 is going to be coming out to at least here. This deal you got here. Okay, so now you want to hold your phone. 3.5 port's going to be coming out here, blocking your finger. So you're going to be out like this, or wrapped around it. Not comfortable. 6R, same situation. You're going to be wrapped around it. That's there, and then you got to hold it, and it's just like you lose the whole vibe, the selling point being the triggers, you lose the vibe of being able to hold your phone like that. I don't know if it's possible, but I think the headphone port, if possible, could be put on the side, somewhere on the side, on the bottom, right down here. We have all that free space. Is there a way to do that? Then you can take full advantage of how the phone's built around a gaming phone. Okay, so let's talk about the core user experience, how I wanted this video to be right here as far as using all these phones. Number one, aesthetics, of course, right? I wanna hear from you guys. Which ones do you think looks best? Me personally, I think the iPhone looks best. It's just crisp, it's solid, it's minimalistic, it's classy, it really is. But I absolutely love the way the 6 Pro looks. It just looks, 
I'm into that black, white, and red theme. So it has it, you know what I mean? That's me. You know, it's a little bit overboard. It definitely looks like a gamer phone. It's not gonna be for everybody, but I love the way it looks. The 6R, again, it looks like a Samsung phone. It's got that classy vibe. Doesn't look like a gamer phone at all. Catches a lot of fingerprints, by the way, as you can see back here, tons of fingerprints. But again, it looks like a really classy phone. Other thing, as far as daily use in the hand, right? Which one? takes the win. I'll tell you, the iPhone is stinking heavy. The 12 Pro Max, at least here, is heavy. It's big. It's chunky in the hand. I love the phone, but it's a chunky guy, right? Coming over to the 6 Pro, again, it's almost that perfect size. It's a really nice size, but it's lofty. It's really lofty. Put this in your pocket, you're going to need a belt on, you know what I mean? The 6R, it's lightweight. Like, when you feel it and the performance it's packing, you're like, wow, it really is. It's comfortable in the hand. Really nice to use for that daily use, keep it in your pocket. Slim, slender, lightweight. And again, packing the specs it has is stinking awesome being this lightweight and slim. But I think the biggest question we should be asking here, right, besides any of that, the looks or style or anything is, is it worthwhile going with a gaming phone over a traditional phone, like an iPhone or something? And that's gonna be up to personal person right there, personal person. Do you game that often? How much do you care about your gaming? Or heck, even your videos with that refresh rate, you know what I mean? How much of that really do you utilize on your phone? I'll tell you what, gaming on the two Red Magic, whether it be the 6R or the 6 Pro, was a stinking blast. And it's the only way I think I'm ever gonna be able to game on a phone again. But I wanna hear from you guys. Would you consider a gaming phone and how far would you go? Would you go with like, say, the Red Magic 6 Pro, or would you be more apt to go with like the 6R, something that doesn't scream really gamer looks? Or are you just like, heck no, I'll just game on my iPhone or whatever basic phone I have, whatever just common phone that's not a gaming phone. I'm really curious to hear you guys down there, because again, I've always used iPhones, but using something like this was just, it made me want to game on my mobile phone, if you catch my drift. But all in all, thank you so much for stopping by and watching my review on a Red Magic 6R and touching on a 6 Pro right here as far as gaming and all that. Hope I helped you out and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.